good. Thank you for joining us for this first of a series of marketing webinars where we're aiming um, at everyone from early, so sm new to marketing, small businesses, right through to the more experienced because uh, often the, the ground rules for marketing are always the same. And, um, and sometimes it's just very simple things that can make a, a huge difference to your business. So we've got in charge of this webinar, a very experienced marketeer, um, Elizabeth Mary Hancock, but she is happy for us to call her Liz. And um, what Liz uh, does, she works with a variety of businesses, helping them to increase their revenues, to gain more clients, but to do it in a way that doesn't use complicated marketing and doesn't mean they have to work all the hours that God sends. So I'm really keen to hear what Liz is going to be sharing with us today on the subject of referrals and making sure that we get the best out of the referrals. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to you now, Liz, and you can uh, tell us a little bit more. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much, Susie. So it's such a pleasure to be here with you all today. And um, hello to those people as well that are watching the replay, because I know a lot of people will be watching the replay. So um, just to say, if at any time you've got any questions, if you um, if something really resonates with you, or maybe it doesn't, maybe you disagree with it, that's fine too. Um, pop it in the comments. If you're on um, Be Live, you can put those in the comments. If you're in our um, lovely new technology that we're testing, which is why we're a little bit late, so sorry about that, you can put it in the chat box. And um, and yeah, just, just pop it in there and we'll be monitoring that. If you see our eyes flicking or flickering around, that's because we're going from one screen to the other. Um, but we are here to give you, hopefully, a really succinct and concise reason why you should be doing referrals. That's what we're starting off with, and we're going to be doing more of these as time goes on. And um, But referrals is a great one to start with, I think. because um, So when Susie first asked me to get involved in this, um, I, I've just got a love for marketing. I really just I love the psychology of it, marketing sales. I love what goes on with the buyer's mind, the seller's mind, all of that kind of thing. And basically, we are sellers. If we have our own business, we have to be able to sell it. And referrals are just such a lovely, natural way of avoiding, basically avoiding having to do loads of marketing, cold calling, cold outreach, and so on. Um, and we were talking about what we should cover in these webinars, um, weren't we, Susie? And I think referrals is a great place to start. So. Susie, in your experience, because obviously the, the majority of um, people watching are from your community, um, tell us a bit what, about why you're so passionate about getting them really, really on point with refer re referrals. Well, one of the uh, ways that I most like to help uh, professionals who, see my field is helping people have a better way to divorce. So I'm often working with uh, financial experts, uh, mediators, lawyers, uh, well-being experts. And what I like to do is I'm a connector, really, and I want to bring them together. My frustration is so sometimes is that uh, just because no one's ever really um, shared the kind of information that we're going to hear today, that sometimes perhaps those referrals aren't being leveraged as well as, as they might be. And there's two kinds uh, just to be aware of. One are the, what I call... Um, professional to professional referrals. So for, for example, a mediator connected with a financial expert. Um, and those, obviously those are kind of long-term, you've got to build a certain amount of trust in order to be able to be confident to refer your clients or people that you've met with, with another person. So a quick call isn't gonna do it. There needs to be some kind of a structure or follow up. So I'd be interested to hear what you, you say about that because um, you know, it's, 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 it's quite a big thing to be introduced to someone who's a very busy professional who said, yes, I'm happy to be, to, to be connected to that person. They may be able to help my clients. But if that person doesn't know how to really follow that up and make the most of it, then that's kind of a, a wasted referral in some ways. And it don't, then doesn't reflect well on the person who's done the referring. So it's really important for people to get that right. And the other one is, is actually referring direct potential clients in. So obviously it's particularly tricky with the, uh, I'm often referring someone who's going through divorce. So they're quite a confused state. They're quite emotional. They don't really, although I've explained the value of the person and, they, and always had their agreement, I don't connect people who haven't said, yes, I don't want to meet them. So they've had had that handover 
Um, and sometimes it's quite a small handout. It might be to someone from Facebook. So they, it's so important for them to be able to pick that up and run with it. But what I find is that they very understandably don't want to pressure, don't want to hassle people. So it's that fine line of how do you follow up someone who may seem a bit off one day because they're talking to you in the car, but you don't know who else is in the car with them. You don't know what kind of a day they've had. It doesn't mean that they don't want to connect with you, especially if you're offering a free no obligation conversation. I mean, it'd be crazy for them not to connect with you as a professional who can, can really help them. But you don't want to hassle them. And so that's a really tricky one that I find comes up quite a lot. And I'd love you to give us some guidance and advice on that, please. Yeah, absolutely. OK, that's great. Fantastic. So I, and I love what you said about um, it doesn't reflect well on the person doing the referring if you don't follow up. I think that's a really key point. If you don't follow up, not only are you missing out on the potential client that's been referred to you, but you're re at risk of irritating the um, the person that's referred them, which is going to mean that they have a lesser opinion of you. They might even, you know, that, that could affect their relationship with you, but they're certainly not going to bother referring anyone else. So I think yeah. it's our duty so, yeah. to, um, to do it for multiple reasons. Our own, our own sense of building our business and getting more clients and getting more revenue. The person being referred because they need the help, else no, no one would have referred them otherwise. And the person referring them because they're doing you a favor so three really big powerful reasons why you should take action if you can get a referral now um i'm sure some of you are thinking okay that's great but how do i actually get a referral we're not going to talk about that in depth because otherwise this, this webinar would be really really long and i know it's it's lunchtime and hopefully you, you, you set the lunch hour aside we're hoping to go for about 40 45 minutes um and um so so what i'm going to do if you would like a script that you can use as to how to ask someone, have that conversation with someone about getting a referral. It's actually very easy. There's no science to it. But um, you need to, you know, there's some certain ways you can do it to make it more easy and less fearful and, and more effective. Um, then we're going to have, you can have access to that. I think if they go to the Facebook group, is that right, Susie? Yes. Um, if you're a member of the uh, marketing support Facebook group. It's a closed group uh, specifically designed to provide, you know, answer all those little questions and to give support and an area to practice as well uh, if you want to test things out and try out ideas. So that's uh, on Facebook and I've actually I've added a link here. I don't know if, if anyone can see it, but I will put it into the be live um, community group as well so everyone can access that um, and uh, yeah so that's will allow them to see uh, replays and uh, plus get access to people like yourself and other marketing experts who are on hand to answer questions. Brilliant. Okay. 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 So, and I had a whole page on um, how you ask for them. So there's, um, yeah, that could be a whole nother webinar. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> how, do you, um, how do you make the most of them? How, first of all, let's just be really clear what a referral is. A referral is from, and I'm talking, we will talk about professional referral partnerships um, a bit later, but at the moment I'm going to focus on personal referrals. So you have a customer or a friend, even a family member, who tells someone about you, says how wonderful you are, and, um, and gives, usually, traditionally, gives that person your details. So the ball is in their court. Um, and I'll come, come on to that in a second, but um, how we can change that and make it more effective. But what I really want you to get is the value of, a, of that referral, that potential client. So if someone's doing the talking to that client first, they are now a warm lead, as opposed to someone that's never heard of you before, that maybe comes across you doing a Google or internet search, sees you in a, in a local um, publication, or even on Facebook or LinkedIn or something. Um, they, if they're looking for someone like you, they're gonna look for a number. Whereas if some, a number of you, so you'll be competing, immediately you're competing against your, your competitors. Um, but if someone's recommended you, they're far more likely to go with personal recommendation. Let's not forget how powerful that is. If you're not using it, you're missing such a massive trip to buy it. So um, think about the last restaurant you went to. It's very strong possibility that you went there because someone recommended it. Think about the last film you watched. Why did you watch it? Because someone said how great it was, or it got great reviews somewhere that you, you read or, or heard about. 
So referrals happen all the time, naturally. So let's leverage that and just put a little bit more work in it to make them really, really effective. So um, I said a traditional um, referral would be someone saying, oh, hey, you should contact this person. What I want you to do is, um, is actually lead that a bit better. So you ask the referral, don't forget I'm going to give you a script for that, um, but you say, what would be really helpful is if you could introduce them to me by email. Then the, it's a lovely introduction. Everyone is, um, is in it together, if you like. You're not having to do a cold call um, to a, a warm lead, but it's still the first time you've spoken to them. They're not having to do the same to you because it would be the first time they've spoken to you. Um, and it, it's just brilliant. It's just great how this works. So I always say, would you mind, not just giving me their number, but could you could you send a three-way email to all, all three of us? So they send it to the person they're referring and to you and say, hi, you know, Liz, this is Susie, Susie, this is Liz. A bit about why they've referred you to just re, um, you know, re-emphasize uh, that to the potential client and then it's kind of like and then over to you two and then you follow that up don't do it like the second the email gets through that you want to say that you're a little busy, but don't wait too long it's much easier if you are the first person to do that got a tiny bit of an echo but i hope that's, that's going to go in a minute um let me just turn my is that better yeah yeah okay now the only problem is i can't hear susie but we'll 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 try and work through this so um what was i saying um and then, yes so then you take the lead you say hey um jess it's lovely to meet you thank you susie for introducing us and um you know i've i've heard that you'd like to see me if you've got some more information try and get some more information by the way from the person referring you find out what specifically their problem is um, you know, the more the more information you've got, the better it can be, um, because they might just miss something that they've told you, especially if they're going through a divorce, like a lot of um, your clients will be. They'll be confused. They'll be probably quite stressed. So the more you know, so that you can not tell them everything and just tell them the most important things for them, the better. Um, so try and find out a bit about them, and um, and just invite them for a, a chat, whether that's um, a, a chat over the phone, an in-person meeting. I would always start with a phone call and um, maybe some of you um, run like um, open days where you're there and people can just come in, you know, like a drop-in session. Um, you can offer them that date, but I really, really, really would advise you, this is so imperative, when, since I've been doing this, the amount of people who I have meetings with has risen rather than just brushing me off and saying, yeah, at some point or not getting back to me. And you just say, I'd love to meet with you or discuss more on the phone. I'm available. Oh, are you available? No, I am available at this time or this time. Would that suit you? Because then actually you're doing them a favor because they don't want to go through their diary and think, oh, well, I, I could fit her in then, but I might not be able to. If you say two times and they are free, they're going to pick one of them and go for it. If they're not, they're going to hopefully reply. They've got a bit of a deadline because you've given them a time scale. They're going to get back to you, far more likely to get back to you with an alternative date. And if it ends up that you play email ping pong, let just say to them, let, let's just, can I just jump on the call with you and we can arrange a time to get a proper time in the diary? Um, because it just saves that, you know, you want to make it as easy as possible for the client, especially if they're in this stress state, which a lot of people are when they're coming to you. Um, so just make it as easy as possible for them. Take the lead. They need to see you as a leader. You are the professional and they need to have that trust in you. And if they can see, particularly if you're going to be dealing with quite tricky situations, if they can see that you do get stuff done and you can lead and, and just, you know, make that first step, that's going to that's gonna help them. You're not, you're not being pushy or anything. That's actually helping them, serving them to a higher, higher capacity. Um, so I'm just going to put my speakers up. Hopefully that um, echo has gone. Uh, sounds like it has, so that's good. Okay. Um, anything I've missed on that? I'm just checking my notes. Just, just, just to just let you know, 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 I've got the, I've got the, echo, the echo now. now. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. There's the, uh, I just had an email from one of the attendees who's 
not able to to get on so if you do have uh, i don't know if they it was an opportunity to send a, a a link email um if you email that to me i'll email that to him you might still be able to get on but i have told him he will get the replay so if has anyone um just thought i'd mention it in case you have a link there because i can't do it from this end but sorry um, you yeah, carry on though i've got i've got the same message i just um yeah. there so be live people bear with us um i think i think maybe Susie, if we just give them the be live link yeah, they can um, yeah. I've, I've, I've told him right. we can do that no worries fantastic fantastic okay so how one of the questions i often get is like what if they don't reply um what if what if there's no response what do i do then i don't want to feel push i don't want to keep chasing them again remember that they need you they've been referred because they have a need and especially if they're in that stress stage we, that we've spoken about the more you can reach out the better you know people are very very busy we're so, all so busy at the moment. Um, well, at the moment, we all, always are. Life seems to be like that. So the more you can reach out, the better. And people will answer their phones far more than they used to because actually it, people are realising it's easier to just answer the phone rather than someone leave a message, then they have to listen to it, then they have to call them back. Actually, I'm just going to answer my phone. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone. And you know, make sure you, um, you've asked the referrer we give you that person's telephone number as well as introducing by email and um and just pick up the phone you can you can leave a message or you could not leave a message it's up to you if they don't answer but absolutely like the phone needs to become your friend not your enemy i know it's horrible i know like this thing weighs a ton sometimes and we just don't want to pick it up but when you get a bit more used to it it does become much easier much more quickly and you actually realize how you how much time you save just by making a phone call rather than writing loads of emails and um, so just have this what i rec recommend you guys is that you come up with your own system i can give you a suggested one but you, you've got to do it you've got to commit to it so if you want to tweak it and maybe come up with some scripts so it just feels easier um you know don't don't read them out parrot fashion but just some guidelines maybe bullet points just to take that um that fear and you know apprehension away because that can really affect us. So, um, yeah, so where are we going? Yeah, I would say I would say keep chasing them. You know, if, if they really don't want to hear from you, you can always give them the, met, the say on the, maybe the third or the fourth time, um, to say to them, you know, if you don't want me to contact you, just let me know and I'll stop bothering you. That's what I say to a lot of people. And then they say, I'm really sorry I haven't got back to you. Actually, yeah, I am interested. Um, just now it's not a good time can you let me know in a month or you know I'm doing this for my event and at the moment can you let me know about the next one because I really can't make those dates I'm so sorry I meant to get back to you if you give them that like almost taking the carrot away then usually that can spur them into action um, not always but all of these things combined can just make such a difference one thing on its own probably isn't going to make a huge difference but when you combine them it's going to really really help okay so um where do we get to yeah it's just remember guys, it's not cold calling remember that is a warm prospect if you take nothing else from this webinar remember referrals are warm Ev not everything else but a lot of other stuff is cold and a warm lead is always going to be easier to handle and to deal with and far more likely to convert than a dead cold one okay um and then yeah make sure that if, if you if you really don't hear back from them don't just disregard them and forget about them maybe put them on your list to phone in two weeks or a month's time and um, you know look at multiple channels so can you make friends with them on Facebook I'd be careful about that obviously you need to be a bit you know use your judgment whether that's appropriate depending on what your what your um, work is and um, and just see, is there another way that they can, that I can kind of like get in front of them in terms of, um, you know, am I writing regular blog posts? Am I updating my website? If you if you do write blog posts, maybe you can send them one on, the, on an email and say, hey, this is a blog I've written. It might be useful for you. If you'd like regular blogs, then I can sign you up to my newsletter. Would that be useful? Because um, some people just aren't ready. Um, and I think especially in the field you're in, you know, yeah, OK, we're going to get divorced. Oh, no, actually, we're not. Um, <laughs> let's try again. You know, just it, it can go on and on, can't it? I know because I've been there. 
And um, frankly, not there anymore. We didn't get divorced, but we were very, very, very close. Um, and um, so I've got an, a bit of an idea about the process. Um, <clears throat> and I've got lots of family members that have been divorced as well. Um, so where are we? Where are we? There's, a, um, there's an old stat that says you need seven different points of contact to um, in order before somebody makes contact with you. I've just recently read a book called Fanatical Prospecting. I think it's by Jed Blount. Brilliant book. Um, he's saying you need between 15 and 20. Yeah, I he's right. And I think that's true. I think seven was very much an average. Um, mm. I think that's far more realistic. And you also need different touch points, which is why email is great. Uh, text message, if you've got their number, don't be afraid to text them. Um, voicemail, obviously phone. Phone, phone, phone should should be really up there. Um, Facebook message, if that's appropriate. Um, you know, if they see you on, you know, running a Facebook Live or this is how it works for me. People see me on multiple channels, Facebook, LinkedIn, occasionally Twitter, a bit on Instagram. But my main focus is Facebook and LinkedIn. So, um, you know, where are your channels and are you putting content out there in the right places? your blogs being published in the right groups on Facebook, that kind of thing. It's a whole other discussion we probably need a different webinar on, like where are you hanging out, how are you getting in front of people? And obviously Susie helps you massively with that, with her amazing group. So, um, good. Am I on track, Susie? Yeah, and then actually, interestingly, you're saying about Facebook messaging, um, I recently got booked to run a um, training for mediators and the whole thing happened via Facebook messaging. Mm -hmm. And and I find a lot of people who say, I'm not really on Facebook, I don't really use it, but they are always on Facebook Messenger. So it, it's a whole other form of texting in its own right, yes. which is becoming a very, it's also a place where people refer people through that. It's something that everybody, every business really needs to seriously look at, along with, with the phone. But, yeah, it, as you say, it's about thinking where all the places they could be. How can I just be you know, sharing this event that maybe you can yeah. come to this event? I'm, there's a free lunch in Richmond, amazing free lunch, full of fantastic professionals. But sadly, I missed yesterday because I was doing the, the, uh, the, the training. But, uh, you know, and I send that out through my newsletter. So if you're, you're one of the people who receives that there's nothing to stop you then inviting people you want to have another touch point say come along to this lunch i'll introduce you to some more people yeah, this it's fun ways to build those trusting relationships with yeah. uh with with the other professionals who who are obviously not people who are going through divorce but with people who are you want to build those trusting relationships with um to share help each other's clients yeah absolutely so let's move on then shall we to that different type of referral, which is more, you know, professional referral, referral partnerships. And um, just as Susie just said, that's with another professional, basically. It's someone like you, um, but not necessarily doing the same as what you do, unless you have a very specific type of client. Maybe they serve um, high-end clients and you send, you know, you've got a different price point. Um, someone that comes to you or them that can't afford them, they could pass them on to you. But generally, it's with people that complement what you're doing. So what I really recommend is, um, and if you do it straight after this webinar, that's brilliant because it will be all fresh in your mind. But absolutely, go to, um, go, just go and have a brain dump, um, a, a brainstorm. I like the word dump, brain dump, really. I think it's more like, get it out of your brain. Um, and just say, okay, what, what kinds of people are, have access to the same people as I do? So if you're a, uh, a mediator, who else would have access to someone that might need your services? And, um, you know, just, I mean, let's take it really basic because this is, this is a bit more obvious. I used to coach um, podiatrists and, um, well, I still do sometimes. And, um, and it's really obvious for them. So who might see, excuse me, um, who might see a, um, a, a podiatrist or someone that needs a podiatrist rather, um, an osteo, a physio, doctors, nurses, you know, um, running clubs, physiotherapists, shoe shops even. So um, think about, you know, it's pretty easy for them, maybe a bit harder for you, but I don't think it's that hard. Lawyers, financial advisors, um, accountants, state agents, because, you know, if that's happening, they may have 
you know, if they've already got their house in the market, they may be a bit further along in the process, but they might not be. Um, Citizens Advice Bureau, you guys probably know far more than I do about who your um, your complementary partnerships are. And as Susie said, if you get yourself to some of those meetings, those and she provides you with a lot of um, information about where they are and, and where to go and, and how to do that, um, go to those networking meetings, go, go to those meetups and ask people, ask them, you know, just have this conversation with them, get to know them. Um, all of this, like the umbrella that overarches all of this, it's all about trust and relationships. Relationships, if it's a one-on-one -on -one relationships, if it's a company, whatever you're doing, you're dealing with people and relationships are the most important thing. And, um, and you can have a really great relationship not face to face. So as Susie just said, the workshop she ran, was it the one no the one you've been invited to run, um, that was all done over Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Some of my best referrals come from people that I've met on Facebook that I've never met in person. Um, you know, my best clients are not my best clients, but some of my clients are on um, you know, I haven't actually met them. I'm meeting them for the first time next week when we get together. So don't think that you have to go in person all the time to all these meetings. Yes, get out there and get out and about because it's nice as much as anything, gets you out. But um, you don't have to spend your whole time driving from one place, driving to another and using all this time. Um, and I think that's another key thing. When you have a potential partnership and you get together one on one, it doesn't have to be in person. It won't not work just because they live in one place and you live somewhere else. You can have, a, I always say, a virtual coffee. If you want a virtual coffee, I don't use Skype because it never seems to work for me. I, I always use Zoom. But um, Skype works for a lot of people. Or you can just use the traditional phone um, and you have a chat. You don't need to see each other. But it's always nice if you can, I think, um, uh, online or face-to-face. Or -face. So um, other things to think about. Like it can feel like you, some of you might be buzzing now and going, yes, I can't wait to get this done. I'm really, really going to go out and find those referral partners. Don't do too many. Don't do too many at once because it's far better to have three or four really or even two or three really established relationships with your referral partners. Ones where you can spend the time referring to them. Remember, it's a relationship which needs to be reciprocal. So you need to refer people to them. And if you absolutely can't, if it just isn't a match, but it is for them to refer people to you, then, you know, you've got to reward them. You've got to say thank you. A handwritten note, um, a bunch of flowers, box of chocolates, taking them out for lunch, a personal touch, sending them a voucher for services they don't need or, um, you know, Stuff that may be financial, it doesn't really give you. Uh, there's been quite a lot of research about it. The, the personal touch is far more powerful. We feel nice, don't we, when we get one? Um, so that's, yeah, that I think that's really, really important. And on that reciprocal basis, always ask, what can I do for you? You know, not just take, 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 but what can I do for you? Oh, well, I don't think you have my clients. OK, what else can I do for you? Who else do you need to be introduced to? If you think about it, you've got a massive network. And if you haven't, I'm sure it's building all the time. and It's becoming massive. And the best thing, the best way to get referrals is to refer yourself, because when you do that, you get known as a connector. You get known as a really generous person, a kind person. And people want to help generous, kind people because it's all based on trust and relationships. Um, so, yeah, does that is that all clear? That sounds great. Could you? Because it's, it's all great information. Could you just just reprieve those crucial first steps? Because I know um, that, that idea of of not just saying meet up when you're free. Just that whole like, how do you start? If you just remind me again how you start taking the process forwards with yeah. with any any type of referral. In fact, because yeah. I think yeah. that's key. Okay, so let's say you've met with um, you've met someone at a networking event. And um, you say, oh, yeah, lovely to meet you. It'd be great to have a chat with you. Um, I think if it's, you know, if, if you really think, mm, why am I meeting up with this person that, you know, it's not a match, and then, then you could just not have that meeting um, or just 
I don't know how you get out of that in a situation. <laughs> that could be embarrassing. You just make a call. You agree for a call. Yeah. You don't agree yeah. for a lunch. <laughs> be a bit strategic about this, you guys. Else you'll end up, I used to do face-to-face networking. I ended up having all these, what, at least an hour meeting in coffee shops. And and a lot of it was just a waste of time. And I don't want to waste their time. So I, now I'm just honest with people. I say, look, I would love to meet up with you. Can we do it online? Um, but I can't do it for like a month or something. Um, so because I need to focus on my priorities um, but it is you never know on the other hand you never know who that person knows so don't write them off be sensible about it um, but, but meet up with the core people that you really feel a connection with and that because again this is all wrong relationship and um, and when you have that meeting you've really got to think okay what is my outcome for this meeting what do I want to get out of this meeting don't want to just go and have a chat and ask about their company and their their career path and you know their kids or whatever you want to make it obviously you need a bit of niceties in there because you are building that relationship but you really think okay what do I want to get out of it so what kind of questions do I need to ask them Um, I need to ask them about what kind of clients they have how their business is set up if they have referral partners um, you need to think about in advance what you can do for them so that you, if they don't ask you, you can offer it to them. Because if you offer it to them first, they're going to offer it you back. And um, and if you've got something planned out already, that's going to be far better than that while you're there thinking, how can I help this person? Who do I know? Because um, nine times out of ten, it will go out of your head. Um, and if they don't ask you to like say, how can I help you? You can just be honest, say, look, what I'm really looking for is... Is there anyone you know or is that you know how could you help me with that um you're not i would be very surprised if they're going to say no sorry i can't and if they can't then that's fine you've had a nice chat um always make sure you've got the next step involved so if it don't ever just go with like oh yeah uh, if i think of anyone i'll send them on to you no Mm -hmm. you've got to have that conversation about well when you do you know is there anyone you can think of now who might be a good fit because you really want them to take action and um and you could write it down so basically you write it down hopefully they will as well um and then say you know oh i'm really looking forward to talking to her or him you know ask a few questions about them and um and say you know this is how i do my referrals is that okay with you how would you like me to do mine to you would you like me to do the same write that three-way email and um, it just invites them. It, it shows that you do this and that it works. So it gives them that trust if they haven't done it before. And if they're doing it before, but they're doing it badly, they're going to learn how to do it well. So again, that's going to kind of elevate your position. And, um, and just make sure you have that agreed process in place. So are you going to, basically, you want to know, are they going to send anyone to me? If so, who, when, and how they're going to do it? But obviously, you don't want to be that that blunt with them. You just need to be a bit professional about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so always make sure you've got that next step. And if it's too soon, I mean, I would say just go for it because what have you got to lose? Um, but if you just, you know, if there's, I don't know for what reason, but like if there's an awkwardness or, you know, the person's a bit strange or something, then um, make sure at least you have the next steps involved. Like, when should we talk again, at least? Um, you know, that's a great thing to say. If it's not really going anywhere, then then at least get that in. Um, how can I help you is always a great one to do. So um, have that meeting, agree the next steps, and really go make an absolute effort to get a referral for that person. You know, if you join something like BNI, um, uh, Business Network International, then you have to, part of the deal is you have to refer. Um, that's, you, you, you get thrown out if you don't refer. And, um, and I think that kind of should be a bit of a life thing, really. If we're in business, I think that's one of the reasons I love BNI. and um, As long as they're not fake referrals, as long as they're true and trusted referrals, I think we should all be doing that. Because if we're helping to grow other people's businesses, other people are going to help us. So um, for me, it's just such a no-brainer. Um, as, as Susie said, if you, um, if you have met someone maybe online or whatever, what else can you do to help them? If you can't give them customers, then or potential clients, invite them to those um, to those marketing events. Invite them to that network meeting. Invite them to a webinar like this. Um, you know, whatever you need, just in, uh, whatever you can do for them, give that to them. 
and um, they're going to appreciate it and, and reciprocate. Okay. Um, and so, so, and so, just so I'll make sure I've got it clear. One of the key, couple of key things I've, loads of good things I've got from this, but one is that idea that when you've had the referral made to you, that you follow and you follow up. Um, up to a, a reasonable distance of not like 30 seconds later but, but but try and get in there soon before they do um that you don't just say hi when shall we talk that you keep it you you structure it very clearly and say um this day or that day or this and this time and that time and because then immediately they're looking at their diary and they're much more likely to come back with a specific time whereas if you go in there vague which i think a lot of us do um you're automatically setting yourself up for a uh, you know three weeks till you can even sort a blooming meeting out um and uh, and then using the fact that if they're on um some people you know they like facetime they like zoom they like skype asking them i've started asking people you know which do you want what suits you because people are comfortable in different mediums aren't they so and again it's encouraging them to put that time and that date in, in the diary um and one of the other things are really important that i think you've um, said is this idea that with the, the follow it, um, so getting the meeting, but then about continuing to follow up um, and doing it through touch points, like inviting them to an event or send, it can be sending them a useful article. So I often say to the professionals like you've been introduced to someone, you've had that initial conversation, you want to keep that relationship. Now you're confident enough to invite them. Why not invite them into the best way to divorce Facebook group if they're going through divorce or or some other something useful they're going to go oh thanks very much you know um you know as long as you've made that initial contact it's not like you're just giving them away <laughs> to your competitors uh, so you've got to gauge it but uh, making use of what's out there to help you to keep all those touch points because you're absolutely right it is not seven not these days no, um, no. all those those many points and so I'm being quite strategic do you think we should like literally write down a plan for Profiles with professionals, uh, refers to potential clients of what our strategy is and what are our touch points, um, what kind of time gaps we should leave. So we've actually got a, a system of our own that we can follow. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, totally. And it has to work for the individual um, who's implementing it. Um, like I could say, right, follow this system. But if that's not going to work for you for whatever reason, you know, then tweak it you know, make it work for you. So think about, okay, how long do I want to leave it? A couple of days, I think that's plenty. Um, <coughs> this whole thing that we talked about, about giving them the two times, I can't tell you how much that has eased my workload of just playing <laughs> ping pong. Um, yes. And having to reserve about five spaces in my diary and then, I'm sorry, no, that's gone now. What, you know. Um, just reserve two spaces for that person and that person only, and then bang, they're in. Um, so yeah, have, I think having that process, and also if you have a firm when it's not where it's not just you, then making that um, systematic across all the people doing this. So mm -hmm. um, you know, it's no good one of you doing one thing and one of you doing something completely different. You're all working for the same company. You want the company's name to build, be built up, not just your own. So um, really do make sure that it's it's kind of seamless for, for all the staff doing it. Um, and don't forget, you guys, if you've got assistants or receptionists, you know, mm. this should be more work for you. It should actually be less because you're spending less time marketing, less time cold calling, less time worrying about where the next lead's coming from and just more time being proactive. Proactive doesn't mean more work. It actually means less work than being really reactive. Um, and all of this stuff, especially if you have a process and you have templates, you can get your um, your assistant to do that for you. Um, you know, if someone's sitting on reception, they're usually un underutilized. Give it to them to do. You know, they probably like more work, slightly more interesting work maybe than just picking up the phone all the time. Um, you know, I've worked a lot with small businesses that have like three or four members of staff, and usually someone's sitting there pretty bored. And, um, and the business owner often thinks I need to do it all myself. I don't even think about doing it to anyone else um, or they don't want to ask or put more pressure on them. And they um, end up kind of falling on their sword because they just give themselves up uh, too much to do. So give it out to other people as well. And if you haven't got an assistant, then I think everyone should, if you're running a business, you need to have an assistant basically. 
something. Um, maybe not someone in your building, but you can always get a virtual assistant. And if you're stuck on one of those, I know some amazing virtual assistants. So, um, yeah, I was going to say that's been a brilliant information. And I've just a thought came to me that um, if I um, would like to invite anyone listening to this webinar, either now or in the replay, um, to because I'm certainly going to, to go away and do this, is to create a a, a, a strategy of follow-ups of how to follow up from referrals and actually post it um, either into the um, expertise TV uh, group for the webinar or on the be live in the uh, Facebook group and just to, to mention with the Facebook group it is a uh, if you're a paid member of the directory alternative to divorce directory you get automatic membership of that everybody's welcome though uh, but there is a payment for that, but it's only, I think it's £10 a month plus fat. So, and you have ongoing support, difficult questions. You can t do your um, strategy and share it and get feedback and comments from not just other professionals, but other people who are you know, key marketing experts as well. So um, I would really encourage you to make use of that. Um, but on the subject of learning more about marketing and getting more confident and moving your business forwards, I believe that um, Liz, you've got a webinar coming or not an actual live event, haven't you coming up? I have. Thank you, Susie. Um, so I have got a live workshop coming up next Thursday and Friday, 15th and 16th of March. Um, it's in Hemel Hempstead, Hertfordshire, just off the M25, very close to the M1. Brilliant location. I think it's much better than having to trek into London. Um, and what are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing more of this kind of stuff, but really personalised because obviously it will be in person. Um, I'm keeping the numbers small. I've only got three tickets left. I don't want to go over a certain number. So I want to keep it so that I can interact with each and every person there and make sure that they have the best plan to go forward. So we'll be doing a bit of mindset work. You know, There's a lot of fear that comes up, especially you might be going through it yourself, fear of picking up the phone, fear of being like the, the one that has to be forward and, and take the lead. Huge fears come up there. We, again, that's probably another webinar and subject that we need to, um, to focus on. And um, so lots of mindset, but getting a plan, getting really clear on your message and what your core services are, whether they're priced correctly, I'm really passionate about charging your worth and giving value, but actually receiving, you know, receiving well for that value that you give. And um, and as I said, having that plan for the next three months and beyond. So if you're at all interested, you can just PM me on Facebook or um, or you can email me Liz at Elizabeth Mary Hancock. That's Liz at Elizabeth Mary Hancock. And um, yeah, .co.uk or .com. Oh, sorry, .com. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this is minor, minor, but key, key detail. And, <laughs> and uh, in regard to the the next webinar, we uh, we will let you know uh, when the date of it is. But we've got uh, an idea for what we think the subject matter could be. Um, we're looking at uh, again on the theme of referrals, but referrals uh, at a sort of earlier stage. So, for example, being in a Facebook group or going to a live networking event, there is an opportunity for the members of those groups to, ready to to refer to you or to say, hey, tag this person in, they know what they know all about this. Um, and also just by the that what you say in those groups, whether it's a live networking or whether it's on Facebook in a, in a, in a closed group, everybody's watching and seeing what you do, what you say, how you are, how can you invite them to want to refer to you in that that process and i think uh, there's there's quite a lot we can both uh, say on that and i think that'll be a really useful webinar so that's the next one that we're planning to to do and we'll let you all know soon when that is yeah wonderful thank you everyone and susie thank you so much for, for having me and looking forward to doing more great and uh, have a good lunch rest of you with uh, the little time that you have left bye sure. for now <laughs>